Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over the gauges on the Nexion display. They're fairly simple, but I thought it'd be worth a video. Plus I want to make a video for every type of item there is on the Nexion display. And sometimes I get some good questions in the comments down below, and then it leads to other videos. There's not a lot to gauges. I have two on here to start with, and then I've got this number box so I can display the value of the gauge down here. I'm going to add a timer down here, and I'm going to set it to 100 milliseconds. And this way the gauge will go quickly, and it'll help speed along the video. We're going to start pretty simply here. We're going to, we're going to increment the gauge every 100 milliseconds, and then I'm going to write the value down here. And as you can see, it's counting up and the gauge is moving. And the gauge goes from zero, which is pointed straight to the left, and as it goes all the way around, it gets to 360. So it's the same degrees as a circle. I guess that makes sense. One of the issues I've had with this is the fact that the um, gauge, you can't change it. It's zero to 360. The slider, the slider you can change the values, the min and max, and you can make it operate um, differently and this is kind of locked into that value. And you can see what happens here when it hits 360 we start to get errors down here. Let me stretch this out. And the 1C one, one and then followed by the 3FFs is being sent out the serial port. And sometimes in the videos or I'll get requests or questions that hey my Arduino is just getting garbage from the Nexion editor. You have to understand that whenever there's an error on it, it tries to send stuff out the serial port, which is kind of interesting, but it can also generate some errors. So in this case, if we weren't looking for this, you might say, hey, after so many seconds, I'm starting to get a bunch of garbage, and it's just because this gauge maybe goes around once and stops, but you don't reset it. So this is just one of those instances I wanted to bring up in the video and show you that this this, this happens, and it happens quickly, in this case every 100 milliseconds. If I clear this, you can see it fills up again. So what you need to do is you need to reset the value every so often so it goes back to zero after it goes all the way around. And we'll do that next. So now every 100 milliseconds we have this increment. But when it hits 50, if it's greater than 50, we're going to reset it back to zero. And then we're going to continue to set this equal to whatever z is. We'll run that next. And you can see it's counting up, and when we get to 50, this should drop back down. But in this example, if we wanted to make, let's say, a, a clock, so it was showing seconds and it would go all the way around, well, when it hits 360 and we want it to hit 360, if we go greater than 360, that can present a problem too. And we'll go into that next. So what the gauge is going to do is it's going to go all the way around when it hits 360 or greater than 360, which is 361, it'll go back to zero. And then it'll go around again. Now I'm going to speed this up or time lapse this until it gets to about 360. And now you're going to see when it hits 360, it just stops because really what it's doing is it's waiting for 361 and since zval can't hit 361 it's a value that it won't accept it starts generating the errors and it just locks it up so this just sits here it never actually executes this line this if z.val is greater than 360 so in this case if you do want to reset it if it's greater than 360 you have to change some values around the reason that I included this is because I want to show you that, that depending on how you use variables and how you use values can affect how a program works. So if we just change the z's to n's and we increment this number field instead because it can go to 361 and when it hits greater then we'll reset it to 0 and then we just change this one here around too so then instead of Instead of setting n equal to z0, we're setting z0 equal to n0. And once again, I'll time lapse this so we don't have to wait the whole time. And you'll see that it keeps going around.
Now you'll see that this will hit 360 and it should go back to zero, and it does. So you don't notice any sort of a hiccup or a pause. Because if we were to set this to only go to 359 and be greater than or equal to 360, then we would miss that. It would never actually be 360 because when it hit that value, it would jump. And if you were doing something based upon a time, that could cause a problem. Now for this example, if we wanted to do this as a seconds, well, th there aren't 360 seconds in a minute. There's 60, so it would be every 6. So we're going to increment it by 6. So we're going to take this value, increment it by 6, and then if the value is greater than 360, we'll set it to 0 just like before. But we have to change our variable to be every second. So we have to add a 0. You could leave this to increment every 1 and then set the timing to be but I found that this is just easier. And now you can see that this is going up by 6, but this is, looks like it's a second clock because it's just jumping every second. And now in the next step, we're going to add the minutes over here. And all we have to do is in this line down here, because every 360, every time it comes around, we're just going to increment this by 1. Well, actually by 6, because this also is going to go um, 360, but there's only 60 minutes in an hour, so we want this to work that way. And so I will run this in debug again. And this is going to take a minute, so I will also run this in a time lapse. And then I'll stop when we hit, when we get around, and you can see that this will jump once. And this should jump when it hits 360, and it did. And now it would go all the way around again, and it would jump again, just like a clock. I believe on the intelligent displays, you can have these backgrounds be transparent. But I'm doing this on an enhanced display. So if I were to drag this on top of this one, you don't see the other arm. So when I run this now, you won't see that second hand move because the hour or the minute is in front of it. Actually, I have that backwards. The uh, second is in front of the minute, so you can't see it. I am going to let it go around and see if, if anything happens when it goes to change. That's kind of interesting in editing. I'll pause that. It looked like it changed to the other display there because the background's gray for the second and white for the other. I'm also going to reset, the, reboot the next one here, the simulator. And you can see that it's white and then it changes after that first thing. So it almost acts as if the timer works in a way or the gauge is working in a way that the last one that's adjusted is brought to the front. Normally the way it works is if I've selected this Z1, I can move it back, and now Z0 is on front. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.